Delighted to say I'm joined by Sambo McNaughton to talk about all things Antrim and, and just what's going on in your neck of the woods. First thing I want to chat to you about, uh, Sambo, is the Caseman Park that uh, it's basically, it's coming back and it's expected to be, you know, in use by 2023. There's a lot of uh, years there where it was kind of sitting on the shelf, like the home of Antrim GEA. And I suppose a place dear to your own heart from playing there over the years and being involved. But um, how much of a relief is it to, to know that Caseman Park is going to be coming back? It's a massive relief for us in Adam Shame. It's, it's our home. It's our, you know, like we needed it like for years there. There's a whole, I was scared there's a whole generation we're never going to get the chance to play in it. Like even my generation, we had some great days, All Star Final and the club and Antrim and County and different games and getting promoted in Division 1, going back and beating Dublin at that time, Brian McMahon's here and that there. Uh, all them days is great and that there and, and we're kind of like nomads, we're running around like gypsies looking for pitches here, there and everything and when you're managing a county team, you're running between Corrigan Park, Deloy, Ballycastle, Cushendall, you know, and that there with no real base and that there. So it's a massive relief now and where it's 23 might be a bit optimistic, but at least it's going to happen. And I see today that another meeting there the day and the politicians are rolling in behind it now and out there. And I just hope it doesn't turn up or turn out to be them and us thing, where it's Caseman Park, the GA is getting more money and all that sort of stuff. And you just have a feeling that's coming down the line and out there. We just want to build where, you know, the same as the Viva. Stadium is in Dublin or Crow Park or anything, we need our own ground too. Like we have Wonsor Park built, we've got Ulster Rugby's their home, the Soccer's got their home, the G need their home in Antrim. Like. Mm. It's been seven years without it. Do you think that there'll be a lasting legacy from that? Is there, do you think players have been lost because of that sort of a thing? No, I don't think so, Shane. I don't think that would be dramatising it too much. I think, you know, like, I can't see people not playing the game because there was more, but definitely the part with the big crowds is not there. I remember playing a big crowds in Frostar finals and not there. And even now, like, it's slot near the top hurting team in Ulster now at the minute. You would love to see a Derry Antrim Ulster final again, maybe, or something like that. Antrim down and out there, even trying to bring that back or something, you know, maybe that's me with rose tinted glasses or something. I don't know. But there's, it's definitely the one thing that, that's happened in a few months is a good news thing for Antrim GA. Um, it, I look forward to seeing county finals there and going and seeing my own county to play there. Mm. And and this weekend, of course, Antrim are back in action after I think it's something like two hundred and thirty days since county teams have been playing. But it's it's going to be a Division Two A final against Kerry. Now, for Antrim, it's been a really good season so far. You're talking about four wins from five and a draw against Offaly as well. So undefeated up to this point, meeting Kerry now in Tullamore. What are your thoughts about this? And, you know, within that, obviously, there's COVID cases building up around the country, around the island. You're looking at Wexford have just announced four footballers are positive and two hurlers as well. What are, you, what are your thoughts going into this game? And, like, if we're honest, nobody has a clue about four lines either. No, the our last game we drew against Offaly and out there, and I've seen it before to yourself, Shane, out there, I really like the look of the Sandham team. They've got a far line that can get at you and do damage. Like you've, you've got the steroids of Conor McCann and Neil McManus straight up, up the middle, maybe, and then you've got the Caelan Malloy's, the James McNaughton's, maybe Clarkey, people like that there, Owen Elliott, and then Kobe. People got we have a forward line now and Donald Nugent who, who lightened up the Antrim Championship this year and you have a forward line there that that to me it's the best forward line in a long long time in Antrim and then you throw in with good hurlers the Burks at the back maybe Matthew Donnelly Joe Maskey Jared Waltz people like that Owen Campbell maybe in the backs middle of the field things like that going on we have generally I believe this is a best Antrim panel probably since I was hurling you know and, and that's not saying we were good but you know what I mean by that like, mm. like we flittered in and out up and down a bit and that there but this is a massive game for us and I always thought you know 
I would to guess a result in this game over any Joe McDonough or anything. I guess is more important to us because just my own my own history and not there and not there in the team that I played on. I thought we made more progress as a team when we get up into Division One away back. And I and I always believe the higher level you play at, the more times you are exposed to that higher level, the better you become. Where a Joe McDonough thing can be, it's good at the time, it's on up but. I think for progress going forward, it's more important that we get up the divisions rather than maybe one of Joe McDonough or a Christy Ring back in the day or whatever. Like, you know, but as for the GA at the minute, Shane, I'm worried. I would hate to be a county manager at the minute. I generally would, because every night you go to training, it must be a nightmare for them. Wondering what's going to come. And I, I would have started off, I've always set up this thing. And I've always believed, Shane, it's all or nothing for me. Either you clock down right and close it out, or else you get on with it. And, and, and to do anything half hearted, and I understand that politicians are not there, they're in a no one situation. And, and I feel for them, I do, because you've got the economy in one sense, and I'm affected that myself, and not there. And then you've got people's health, which is. President, and they're you're trying to serve two animals here or two bosses, and it's nearly impossible to do. Where I feel that if you try and do something half-hearted or please two sections, it's you kind of fall between two stools. So I've always been of the belief where it's all or nothing out there. But it's getting the stage now where I think the GA really have to look at it like, like what's going to be the value? What is the point? Like if, like if. Colin Finley and TG Reid are travelling in the same car and next thing Colin Finley's work colleague gets tested positive the night before a Leinster final or something and Kilkenny and TG and Colin can't play. Does that devalue the Leinster final? In my world it would like, you know, because you're you might beat a Kilkenny team, but you're not beating the best Kilkenny team and, and this is the circumstance we've gone to and I, I see for Mana there weren't able to prepare right for their game and to me, it's getting a bit, you know, and I don't know, it's just traveling all over the country. Like, I was, if you asked me two months ago, Shane, should the GA run ahead? And I definitely said, yeah, but now I'm starting to think, you know, what is the point? Like, it's it just seems to be every day there's more stuff in there. Wexford today now is, does that them not be able to train for two weeks? And are they going to play? And I, I, if I was a manager now, it must be a nightmare for every county manager around the place. You know, I just, I don't know. I'm falling between two stools myself about it. The minute like this game, I, like I'd have been devastating for Antrim if this county game hadn't gone ahead, because we've been wanting to get up that thing, and now we finally got there and that there, and, and it is a fifty-fifty game. Like we played carry earlier on the year, but the Conways weren't playing and different things like that there. But it's going to be. The like, Antrim's going to have to be at their best to beat Kerry this year because they have been two very even teams the past couple of years. So it's a game going over. But if you said to me, would I be happy getting this game out of the road? And I said, yeah, probably would. And out there, get the league played and maybe forget about the championship or something. Because I don't want to see it turn into a first, if you understand what I mean, where teams are coming half panels. And not been able to prepare and excuses made and that there were and then maybe not much contact challenge games is maybe hard to get organized things like that there is how well is teams preparing and that sort of stuff so it's it's crazy times all around she and it really is but i don't know i don't know the answers but i, I do see both sides of my own views is I'm an all or nothing sort of person. You, you go at it 100%, do it right. You lock everything down and you do the break and you do it for two, three weeks and everything stops or else you let's go at it here, full blast, you know, where it lies and see, roll the dice, mm -hmm. you know, one or the other. Like, I don't think the in between thing, in between thing works. It doesn't in any other aspect of life, so why should it shoot here? Yeah. I mean, it's one of these things where we probably all have sort of <clears throat> an internal debate because in one sense, if you do, I mean, obviously in, in the north, <clears throat> there's an element of closing down a bit more at the moment. Um, but if you do a circuit breaker, what happens if after that three or four weeks, things come back 
the way they were anyway in case it's built up again do you stop again like if you stop GEA and the inter-county season now for the rest of the year and you're thinking should we pick it up next year what if cases are still going so like part of me would be like play it if we can the GA have said like January is there if we need to postpone some games that you know I mean the other side if you were to trivialize it every year some team is missing a few players through injuries and if they're missing it through COVID I mean again it's, it's a more serious thing but like you know, sometimes that's just the break of the ball. And if we can play sport, is, is it better than having nothing? And I mean, I'm like you. Is there an asterisk on it? But then again, would I like it to go ahead? Like players who don't want to do it should be absolutely entitled to opt out. I see Stephen Campbell saying online, he, he did a tweet about how he'd be devastated to see it go. He'd like to see it go ahead, whereas others are questioning it. But you, even the idea of players just, I mean, there's no one going to question someone for opting out. Like Mickey Quinn, I had the story this week. The Longford man, he's opted out this year because he's a new baby in rising cases and everyone understands that. So do you think, like, I don't yeah. think any player is going to be slated for, for taking a season off. No, look, we've all got our own individual circumstances and everybody's got their thing. If, if, if you're going home and you're, maybe your grandparents is up with me or something like that there, it, you really got to ask yourself hard questions out there. And I totally agree with you. Like, like, and you can understand why people are worried about their business and life in general and like I'm part of that gang too like I'm worried like like we're going to break now for four weeks like my business is going to close now on Friday evening for four weeks there's no guarantee after four weeks it's going to open again Shane like, like that's big I could I could see us closing down all over Christmas and like and the jobs and we all know it we've all just trying to get if you could play the GAC of course we want to watch matches I grew up Love him watching hurling. It's all about the game to me. It's I love watching the game. Like you know, I want to see hurling every day of the week. If an ideal life, you know. But, but but as you say, like every team gets injured, not there. But it's nobody's going to slate anybody for not wanting to take part in that there because everybody's got their own circumstances and, and that there in their own maybe their mother's underlying health problems and things like that there. And it's it's. It's a definite individual decision in that there, and you have to respect everybody for their own views. And but the thing I, I, I don't want to, you, you can't get into it where it's them and us, where you knock people for having that point of view, or you knock me for having my point of view out there. I think everybody has to be different and accept accept it as if if you're going home and your father's got an, an underlying health problem and you be panicking for him to get it, like. Like of course you do whatever you think is best for your family and the health of your family and nobody can argue that at the end of the day it's only a hurling match it's only a league you know there's more important things in life we all understand that but i do think that there is a an element for kids being locked up and the social end of it and the thing and out there and there's just some decisions being made that do question you like closing the pubs at 10 o'clock like everybody knew what was going to happen there anybody had ever run a pub if you put everybody on the street at one time you know really what's going to happen and even now closing the off at eight o'clock what's that going to do people are just going to go and buy the drink earlier you know and there's going to be house parties and that there and you know like and to try and get to try and get 18 to 30 year olds to behave in a certain way when they go to college and that there like, it's nearly like trying to push water up a hill like once you get into that gang mentality or mob mentality and out there they're all gonna behave a certain way and we all know they shouldn't and out there but life's life and kids will behave a certain way and out there and you try and be as responsible as you can be and out there but it, i don't know i have no great answers and out there but i just, my own feeling this year is without repeating myself for out there it's we should either do it right or go on Mm. No, I, I just don't think this trying to do bits and pieces here and there to can tell it not there works. I just don't think it's like I, I feel we should maybe go a New Zealand route or a Norway route, you know, mm. whatever. Yeah, and well, the one thing is, it would be nice that if you didn't necessarily subscribe completely to one person's opinion and you sort of you know, tried to tease it out that they didn't necessarily assume you meant you were a hundred percent the other direction. And that's one of the big problems of modern life now. People get entrenched in their own extreme view, and uh, there's no room for for discussion. Just to to go back to just talking even about Antrim hurling this year, and 
you know, it's been a long time since Darren Gleeson has probably been has been able to play too many matches with his team. Would have played against uh, Tipperary, I believe, last weekend in a challenge match. I'm not sure how much you know about that or not. But in a general sense, it's the, like you're, you're saying there, it's the best Antrim team since probably back in your day, which, of course, was a team that, that uh, competed very well. What sort of vibes are you hearing about in terms of how they're developing this year or, or have new players come through? Yeah, well, like... like like I would say that's only my opinion, Sam, but at the end of the day, I can sit here and say the best Antrim panel I've seen in years. But they have to go and prove it, man. You know, they have to they have to uh, walk the walk as the saying goes not there, but they have the potential that like you've Niall McKenna and people they got there that are on board this year that are dipped in and out the year before, Donald Nudge and people they got, you know, and that there, but I do believe that they can, but like, but I would imagine everybody's in the same boat. Saying I can't imagine Kerry has had a pile of work done or a lot of challenge games either. Like I know they were supposed to play Cork there a while, and it had to be cancelled and different things they got there. And I'm sure everybody's in the same boat. I would, I'd imagine, it's, to be honest, I would imagine it's a fifty-fifty game going into that there. But like, I can sit here and bum this Antrim team up and. Darn's a good fella, a good backroom team with them and out there. But it's all about results. You've got to get the results. These players have to produce now and suddenly this is to me, this is the biggest game Adam's had in years, Shane. And that's and that's the way I look at it and out there. And, and they have to produce the goods. So if I have a fault with a few of them, they're kind of a bit of inconsistency. They, they can tear it up one week and then the next week you see them, they kind of hide and you know they're absolutely you know, they, there's no but they 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 have to go like I would say this is this big a game that some of these players have ever played in mm. and I know it's a strange circumstance getting into them with the, the cove and all that there it doesn't add to the build up and all that there but for me been around Antrim as long as I have been and out there and wanting to see them get up the next level like this is a real chance and that's why I really wanted this game played more so than a championship or a Joe McDonough out there mm. it's so vitally and important for us um, and if Kerry's going to beat Andrew they're going to have to hurt well too like this Andrew this Andrew set up and that there and, uh, and Darren and them have been working hard this past while and that there they played tip and that would obviously the contact with Liam Sheedy there and that there I didn't hear much about it I heard they went well enough and that there but you know challenge games are challenge games at the end of the day and all the good world in the world is still a challenge game but you're playing against that higher level as well so mm. I look forward to seeing it like you know it's a shame we can't get to see it but I look forward to watching it anyway yeah and let's assume, let's assume uh, some sort of a meaningful championship goes ahead in that Joe mm. McDonough I mean there are some mouthwater enough games as far as Antwerp are concerned coming like against Westmead Carlo um, you know obviously a couple of more games in there as well to get promotion from that up to Leinster next year, and it, let's assume that Leinster could get back to being into the uh, sort of round robin situation. And if you also got promoted in the league, you're talking about a huge amount of games against top level teams next year. So both of these competitions coming hot on the heels of each other, you know, it could be huge for the development of Antrim. It'd be massive, seeing for us to win the league and the and the Joe McDonough would be massively like, but that Joe McDonough I was managing in the first year I was introduced and every game we played and the ones we won we could have lost and and the ones we lost we could have won like and that there and it's it's a great competition I actually think it's a brilliant competition the Westmeath and the Carlos and that there like there's only a pop of ball in any given day between them all like and Leash was in there as well and with some great battles with Leeson out there and I think it's a great leveller and out there and it's a great it's a great commentation. The one that is a really achievement like for other years maybe one in the Christie Ring when we did and out there it wasn't such a big a deal for us and out there, but it would be any deal for us to get up into that lens to that next level and out there. Because that's how you that's how you take the next level is playing against the best. You want to be the best, play against the best. And the more times you're exposed to them sides that are above you, the better you become. Like, And that's always been Adam's problem. That's, and that's also his problem. We need to expose more. And, and going back to my generation, I've always believed the reason that 
we were able to compete for as long as we did was because we did promotion to Vice One and the and the majority of that team played their minor hurling in Leinster against the Kilkenny's and the Wexfords and that there. So we come up through that and it, and it wasn't such a, a gap for us. Like we were up to the pace of the game. Like, like for the listeners out there, like there's no difference in the skill level of, of an Antrim, good Antrim hurler and a good a good Wexford hurler and that there. It's, it's the pace they play at that and the cuteness and that there. And you only get that by playing against them teams on a regular basis at a higher level and that's and there's no great secret that that's not thing that there's to trying to get there and there's always been times where you know there was meaningless games where we went and got tomered out to get from that there where it didn't really matter but you know like the more you play at that higher level the better you become and that's what we're trying to do very hard and on demand ulster as well you know